I have a problem. Half of the pea plants in my garden have white flowers, and the other half have purple flowers. But my girlfriend's favorite color is lavender. Not purple, lavender. So how would I go about making her a pea plant with lavender flowers? Well, any five-year-old can tell you that white plus purple equals lavender. So I figured I could crossbreed her a brand new pea plant with lavender flowers. All I need to do is take the pollen off the stamen of the purple flower and brush it onto the isolated pistil of the white flower, collect the resulting seeds, wait for the new plants to grow, and... All still purple. Uh-oh. You know what? I bet it takes a generation to kick in. Generation two will be lavender. Alright, I'm wrong again. They're all still purple, except one that mysteriously went back to white. <sighs> I'm confused. Farmers have been successfully crossbreeding plants since the dawn of civilization. Why can't I make a lavender pea plant? What is going on here? What is going on here? What's going on here? What is going on here? I'll tell you what's going on here. You don't know what you're doing. You expect to make a whole video series about genetic engineering, and you don't even know who Gregor Mendel is. And by the way, next time you try to lie about having a fake girlfriend, remember to take the watermark off of the stock photo. Wait, who are you? Don't you worry your pretty little head about who I am. Just know that I'm here to keep my eye on. Now go Google Gregor Mendel and get on with the video. Oh, so it turns out someone already figured out this exact problem. In 1865, an Austrian monk named Gregor Mendel did this exact same experiment and laid the groundwork for the entire field of genetics with nothing but a greenhouse full of pea plants. Farmers have always known that when you crossbreed different plants, some traits might disappear and then reappear in later generations, but no one knew why. Back then, people figured that kids were basically a 50-50 mix of their parents. But if that was true, I'd be able to make lavender pea plants. So Mendel came up with a new theory that could actually explain how traits are passed from generation to generation. He did the same experiment we did earlier and got the same results. Cross-pollinate white and purple, those children are 100% purple. Let that generation self-pollinate and 25% return to white. It happens the same way every single time. So what could explain this? Well, the purple peas are obviously capable of giving birth to white peas, so they must be somehow, like, silently carrying the white trait in order to pass it on to the next generation. So here's Mendel's theory. Each plant has two copies of a trait. He called these alleles. When that first crossbreed happens, those children get one allele from each parent, so one white and one purple. That pea plant ends up with purple flowers. So that must mean the purple allele is dominant and takes precedent over the recessive white allele. But the white allele is still there and can still be passed on to the kids. And if you actually list out all the possible combinations of alleles for that next generation, it will explain that 25% ratio that happened in the experiment. Let's take a closer look. When peas self-pollinate, that means the plant essentially impregnated itself. So the quote mother and the quote father both have one white and one purple allele. Mendel figured that deciding which allele actually gets passed on from each parent is probably random, like flipping a coin. So let's take a look at all the possible allele combinations that come from those two random coin flips. Flip a coin for the father, purple. Flip a coin for the mother, purple again. So that kid will be double purple. That's one possible outcome. Let's do it again. Father purple, mother white. That kid is purple too. Remember, the purple allele is dominant, so when it's half and half, those flowers are purple. Father white, mother purple. That's the same as the last one. And finally, father white, mother white, that kid will have white flowers. 
Those are the four possible allele combinations, and we end up with 25% with white flowers. Another way to visualize all the possible outcomes is with a chart like this. This is called a Punnett square. Just put one parent on one side, the other parent on the other side, and then fill in all the squares like this. There you go. All the possible outcomes. It's pretty incredible that Mendel was able to describe this whole system before anyone knew that chromosomes or genes or DNA even existed. He observed a natural pattern and then reverse engineered the system that explains it. Mendel's theory was so far ahead of its time that when he published it in 1865, no one even took it seriously. It wasn't until 30 years after his death that his theory was rediscovered and Mendel was sainted as the father of genetics. I can feel his pain. No one watches my drum cover videos either, but by my calculations, my genius will be discovered sometime in the 2100s. That's it for now. But make sure to tune in next time when we talk about the thing that Mendel was unknowingly studying this whole time.